Um, before we get into those first two points, I know I've been seeing some questions in the community about launch day. So just wanted to reiterate, it's September 26 is when the update goes live to become in FC Mobile, we will be returning to one global region. So really excited. I know the core community has been asking about that for a long time. Dubs in the chat. What does one global region mean for FC Mobile? So that means that leagues, friends, friendlies, division rivals, leaderboards, and matchmaking will be all done in one global region. So that means you will be not separated from people in different um, regions or shards. It's all going to be one like we had it in previous seasons before, I guess, 2021 and before. So I also means that leaderboards will be fully global. So one leaderboard for division rivals um, first attack, one for division rivals head to head, and one for division rivals manager mode. And I've seen a really exciting moment. And that is the same thing as well. Market is fully global as well. Um, yes. So FC Mobile really stands for authenticity and realism. And that's manifested itself in a new ebb and flow of the gameplay. So what we wanted to do is a more composed, realistic and mobile friendly game speed. We know that sometimes in the current game, the game can feel quite fast and you know, you receive a pass instantly, a defender is pressuring you. So we wanted to give you more time on the ball, make decisions, you know, read the play and also diversify the bill of play that way. So giving you more space, more time, slowing things down a little bit and just creating a new flow for this new era of our franchise. So dynamic game speed really breaks down into two areas. And the first one is pace. So let's roll over to the next clip. So on FC Mobile, you will see a much more tangible attribute effect for acceleration and sprint speed. And you can see this here in the sprint race, the guy on the top, ID number one, you can see he's the fastest guy. So he has a really high acceleration and sprint speed attribute, and then a medium rated and a low rated player. So you can see these differences and you'll feel it when you play the game. This also gives more personality to players. Now, I understand maybe there's a concern here right away in saying, hey, it's all about pace this year. But that's not really the case because gameplay balance is the top priority always for us. So if we roll onto the next clip, you will actually see a sprint race between a dribbler and a defender. So what we didn't want is that the dribbler can just dribble away and defenders can catch you. So the blue player has a head start, but the defender is catching him. Why? Because every time your dribbler takes a touch, he has to decelerate, right? Just like in real life, imagine you're dribbling and you're sprinting down the sideline with the ball. Every single time you approach the ball, just a few seconds before, you have to slow down and then re-accelerate again. And this accelerate, re-accelerate allows the defender who's just in pure locomotion to catch you. So it's very important. Gameplay balance, top priority. So let's move on to the next clip. The second part for dynamic game speed is actually in dribbling. And this is very exciting. And here I'm gonna reflect the first kind of community request. We've heard you guys, you guys said, well, small players are just not that valuable. There's no significant difference. So we wanted to make sure that players like Messi feel super agile and fast. So we made some changes for dribbling. The first one is that agility attribute has a higher impact on the uh, playback rate of the dribbler so he can turn faster, but also player height. So the smaller your player, the faster he'll be able to turn while dribbling. And I think this video comparison side by side is very clear. Now, of course, the small player on the left, he has very high agility, very high dribbling and is quite small. And the player on the right, he is kind of medium rated, but you can see clear differences in how fast and nimble the player is. So we really wanted to make sure that small players feel super agile, fast, responsive, and you know have a value and purpose shooting. So let's roll the first clip. So we know that in the current game, shooting is quite fun, quite accessible. You can almost score from anywhere with anyone, but we kind of lost two things. One is user skill. And for elite shooting and FC mobile, you really want to make sure we are rewarding great user skill, but also you want to make sure that shooting feels more realistic overall. So this is about like how we take shots and how successful you can be. So why, does it, why is it called elite shooting? Well, because we're putting a lot more focus on user's input and the way he takes shots. So there's three areas. 
that impacts elite shooting. So let's roll onto the first clip. So the first one is your aim, your manual aim. So you can see this white line here in our debug. Uh, this, you can see this white line extended from the player. This actually represents your angle that you're aiming with with the joystick. So if you have a great manual aim, as in this example, you can get the shot on target more often. And if you aim way outside, your chances of scoring will be decreased. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're aiming off to the goal uh, that you will always miss, but your chances will decrease, right? So um, we want to make sure that, hey, if you do a great job manually aiming, you will be rewarded. So that's important to us. So let's move on to the next clip. And I would say this is probably the most important one. This is shot context. So how you put your player into a position, right? Like in this example, you can see I'm beating the defender. I have great space, a great angle to the goal. And I have, I'm basically putting my player in a good position to score. So we want to make sure that we reward you for putting your player in a good position. Now, if you roll on to the next clip, I show the opposite of that. So if you're attempting shots under difficult situations, you will less likely to be successful. So these are things like, you know, moving away from the goal, taking volley shots, uh, you know, facing, not even facing the goal, like doing a 180 degrees shot or these kinds of things, defensive pressure, uh, all, these th all these things will impact your ability to score. Now let's make an example. So let's roll on to the next clip. You're going to see back to back, kind of the same situation here. I'm taking a first time shot with my weak foot and I'm going to miss. But then the second time, I'm actually taking an extra touch to then score. So those are the little things. But in real life, when you play football in real life, those are the difference makers, right? You take an extra touch, you compose your player, you set yourself up, and you're going to be more successful. And these are the things that will be the difference maker in really competitive play at the highest ranks of head-to-head. -head. And that's what we wanted to do. We want to make the game still accessible, and you know we're still going to assist you in shooting, but those differences of when you take a shot and how, they'll be the difference maker. So let's move on to the next clip because the next one is also very important. Let's talk about headers. Yes, we know, we know about headers and, we've, and we, we try to improve it uh, significantly with elite shooting. So as you can see, elite shooting also extends to headers. And what you see in particular in the situation here is if you apply defensive pressure to the attacker, you can kind of, you know, force him to have more error on headers. So what we didn't want is that if you have great defenders and you do everything right, you pressure the guy and the, the, the player still scores easily. That didn't feel fair. So you can now affect the accuracy of the attacker by putting pressure on him. And generally speaking, headers also follow the same laws of elite shooting. So, you know, the closer you are, the better your angle and so forth. Uh, will increase your chances of scoring. So we wanted to make sure that you can still score from headers, of course, but in a more realistic and um, regular manner. Okay, let's move on to the next clip. Now we get into the visuals. So you can see here some beautiful shot animations because we have done a big animation refresh for shooting to complement elite shooting like this beautiful finesse shot animation, like the way the player bends his body here is so beautiful. So both the regular shot and the finesse shot seen a big, large animation refresh, as I said, to visually complement elite shooting. So it feels very satisfying to score. And then if we move on to the next clip, we've also improved our goal net physics because it's all part of the emotion of scoring, right? Like you, you score a goal and then the ball hits the back of the net and it feels and looks great. Well, for FC Mobile, we have a deeper net impact when the ball kind of hits the back of the net. And also you can see here a more refined ripple effect that just, just looks great. Like it's, it's amazing. And also we improved our replay cameras. So you're going to see these beautiful goals and net physics up close. And so with a more skill-based shooting system, new animations, better goal net physics, we really want to make sure that every time you score a goal in FC Mobile, it feels rewarding and satisfying. And I believe for the guys who play the beta, you can you can attest to that. If you score a goal, it feels more satisfying than ever because it takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more skill, but you feel rewarded. And that's exactly the emotion we're aiming for. So this is us. Ah, amazing. It's, it's by far, by far, 
my favorite feature uh, of this update and so exciting. We're bringing the power shot to FC Mobile. These are just such beautiful animations that really, you know, it's, as a football fan, like personally in real life, I always play like forward or striker. And I'm not saying I look like that. I think I look like that, probably not, but it feels so rewarding uh, to score these power shots because um, they're the fastest and most powerful shot in the game, right? Um, and when you when you really hit it right and you it, you know you score, it's just it's immensely satisfying and it complements elite shooting. So regular shots are going to be a little bit slower compared to the current live game. So power shots are the fastest shot. So encouraging you to kind of take that shot from like outside the box and scoring amazing long shot goals. Now of course you can take it from inside the box, but it's kind of really a shot for medium to long range. So let's move on to the next clip. So. Because power shots are so powerful and fast, you can still see here that the animation length is actually longer, right? So, in fact, a power shot has a three times longer shot animation than a regular shot. So what does this mean? This puts you at the risk of being tackled, as you just saw. So the risk versus reward mechanic of a power shot is simple. You get the best and most powerful shot in the game, but it takes longer. So you need to be careful when and how to use it. Like in this example, I'm dribbling, the defender's very close, probably shouldn't have used a power shot. So use it with, with a caution. And when you have a bit of space, a bit of time, then you can use it. Now let's move on to the next clip. Let's talk about other things, how we balance the power shot. So power shots follow the same principles of elite shooting. So attempting shots from a good context, right? And um, a good angle to goal and having good aim also helps absolutely and the other thing is power management yeah so this means if you attempt a power shot with like a 30 to 50 percent power this is the ideal sweet spot for a power shot but if you attempt a power shot from a much higher power so like you know when your power bar goes orange or red most likely you're going to miss however which brings me to my third uh, aspect of power shooting attributes also play a big role here again true player personality meaning if you have a great and high rated player he'll still be able to keep the power shots down in like higher uh, power uh, ranges but we generally suggest try to keep the power shot between 30 to 50 percent to see the highest success rate and that's the power shot guys that's correct and you know the power shot just complemented elite shooting well the knock-on complements our dynamic game speed so this is a very traditional control and we never really had it on a mobile before so i'm excited to bring it and it was the perfect time to introduce it so the knock-on allows you obviously to um you know extract that full potential of your player's acceleration attribute while dribbling and it, it allows you just to break away from defenders create space wherever like if you get a through pass into space and you want to break away you just want to push the ball forward and uh, like a play like mbappe you know like just having that explosive touch then you can do that now. So uh, if we roll to the next clip, uh, the best way you can do it, like, as I just said, you get a, a pass into space and you just want to break away from that defender and you can push uh, with the knock-on just to create that extra bit of space. Now you can do that. Also, if we roll to the next clip, you're going to see my preferred way of using the knock-on, which is a setup touch into a shot. So you can do a knock-on and then key up a shot. And I tell you what, the best combo is knock-on to power shot. Now that looks really good. So I highly recommend trying it. And as you can see, a kind of parallel to the box, knock on into the shot. Very, very satisfying. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, one more video we have that shows you the way we can use the knock on. It's just beating one on one a defender. You're facing him head on. And you can just try to kind of beat him with a, a quick knock on. Now we should note here the controls of the knock on. Uh, for the people that played a bit, they know this already, but knock-on is a team skill move and we did this because we tried many different prototypes throughout production and some of them felt really good like double tapping sprint or things like that but they conflicted too much with other existing controls so putting it as a team skill moves felt good but also allows you the user to customize whichever you where you like so you can by default by the way the knock-on is swiping down from the sprint and skill button but you can customize it any of the four directions you like 
And also, we added the hard stop, which is the exact opposite of a knock-on. It allows you to do a sudden stop. So now with hard stop, knock-on, dynamic game speed, you can control the player speed like never before. And just, again, diversify the way you build up, the way you take on one-on-ones and open up the game. And uh, I'm excited, really excited to finally have it on mobile. So that's the knock-on. Yes, absolutely, Antoine. And it's always important to extend and expand, I should say, our defensive controls. We had so many cool things on offense, but hey, let's not forget about defending. And the hard tackle not only is a great way to defend in general, but it's also a great countermeasure to power shots, right? Uh, so you can see a hard tackle is basically a far lunging, more powerful version of a stand tackle. And it's perfect for blocking shots or taking out a player in fact, we've added a tons of new fall animations. So what I like to do is just crush a defender and then the player, the opponent player, just falls over with a cool new fall animation. Very satisfying. So let's move on to the next clip, actually. You can see here uh, that this is perfectly used. You can contain a player and then kind of lunge forward. You're covering a lot of space. And in fact, high rated players like Virgil van Dijk will have even more powerful and faster, far reaching hard tackles and they can come in with so much force taking out the player and it's really satisfying. But just like power shot, just be mindful and careful when to use it, right? Because you are committing to a long animation. So it takes maybe a little bit of practice, but trust me, once you start knocking down people with the first couple of hard tackles, uh, you're gonna love it. So let's move on to the next clip, which is also showing another way you can utilize the hard tackle, which is blocks, whether that's across, whether that's the power shot, as I mentioned before, it's a perfect way just to slide in there in the last second because you're covering so much ground. And in the beta, I had a moment where my player was on a breakaway. He actually teed up a power shot. And in the last second, literally, I slid in kind of from behind with a hard tackle and got my foot on the ball. And it was immensely satisfying. And we're just expanding our range of controls and ways to defend. That's the hard tackle.